Hi and welcome to this new series of videos. In this videos what we're going to explain is how to add elements to RVIS 2 and we, will, we are going to start with TFs then we'll continue with uh, robot descriptions, with the robot models, then the cameras, point clouds, lasers and so on. So in this first video we're going to show how to add the TFs in RVIS 2. So let's get going. So in the video description below you'll have the project where you'll have all these files here and I'm going to show you how to launch the, the simulation and then how to add the TFs. So the first thing is let's start the simulation. We open the terminal and we execute the simulation. I copy this one. This one is the good one. Just because the other one launches everything and I want you to see each step. Then here we will spawn the robot. There we go. And finally here we're going to do a ROS2 source install setup.bash and then rviz2. Okay, let's have a look at the simulation, what we have here. There we go, so we have a very cute voxel kind space. I'm going to uh, I'm going to close our viz just to be sure and I'm going to relaunch the publisher because maybe I I did it too quick. There we go. There we go. So here we have our beloved box bot that we're going to use in these tutorials. In this case I've added a laser cameras and so on that we'll see in the next videos. But in this one we will concentrate on TFs. So let's have a look at the RVIS2. There you go. We go to the graphical tools and inside the graphical tools you should have something similar to this. The first thing is to set the, the frames, the fixed frame, which is the frame that we will reference all the data to. In this case, I want the odometry. Perfect. And then we will add the TFs. Very simple stuff. There we go. So now we have our frames. You can see that there are loads of frames, so what we are going to do is deactivate all of them and just put the ones that we are interested in, in this case the chassis, the odometry, the right wheel and the left wheel which is around here. Perfect. We can also put the names, fantastic. And in this case TF we don't have to specify quality of services or anything like that. So there we have it. Now what we're going to do is move the robot and see how it performs. To that we get the keyboard and we're going to launch the keyboard teleop to see how it moves. There we go, we lower a bit the speed because this robot is really really fast. And then I'm going to put this here. I'm going to put this around uh, here, there we go, and this guy I'm going to put it around there, okay, that way we can see everything, there we go, and now let's move around, you can see that the wheels are moving exactly as they should, and also if I start moving around, perfect. And that's how we put TFs in our viz uh, for ROS2. This is how we do it. In simulation there are some details that you need to know in order to make this work because it's totally different from um, ROS1. I'm going to show you just a bit of code so the people that are interested in this 
there we go we go here and the most important part that was really strange for me at least was that in order to have the the joints we need to do this let's put me here we have a differential drive which has some differences with ROS1 but the big one is this one which is the joint state publisher which I I didn't use in ROS1 I used the control systems and so on in this case you have to state here all the joints that you want the system to be published so I don't have any control system spawned here any controller manager anything like that for the moment I only stated here the joints that I want the system to publish that way I, I have information of the wheels but also I have the TFs of all the caster wheels that have three joints the yaw pigeon uh, roll pigeon yaw so this was one of the main problems that I had with the simulation and now we're going to try to do the same thing but with a real robot for that we're going to use our real robot connection for that and we're going to make a reservation and then connect to the real robot and use bridge ROS bridge to be able to see the TFs from ROS1 to ROS2 so let's go we're going to do a reservation of the turtle bot 3 so book now I select this one I confirm and that's it I have my reservation so at 7 I'm going to uh, create this this connection okay so now what we're going to do is connect to the real robot uh, I made a reservation in turtle bot 3 and I'm going to connect right now and see try to see the same things in the TFs from ROS1 to ROS2 using the ROS bridge. Let's have a look. First we connect and we wait for the connection to be established. Okay, so once we have established the connection, the first thing is to load the parameters, the topics that we want to do the bridge. This is the most efficient way. That way we don't publish things that we don't need from ROS1 to ROS2. So we launch the load params. This loads basically the instructions to say, hey, ROS1, publish these, 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 these topics into ROS2. The other ones don't do anything. Then we launch the parameter bridge. And we should see something, these kind of messages, which is I'm publishing this and this topic. Uh, maybe I don't have this this topic because blah 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 whatever and finally we execute we see in ROS2 topic list and we see that effectively we have those topics there and the one that we are interested in today is the TFs so we are this 2 and here we do the same procedure, exactly the same. So we go here and we open to odometry and then we add our TFs. And there you go. Now, if we want to move it, let's, in this case, I'm in a terminal with ROS1 to ROS1 you just have to source the catkin workspace so source devil setup.bash if you want to work on ROS2 then source the ROS2 workspace so now we I already have it here and let's have a look in all the places so the first thing is that there's a speed limitation that means that um, you have to lower it otherwise it won't work and as you can see we are moving the robot the TFs are moving and then we see the cameras because um, they are much faster the the TFs than the cameras just because 
uh, there's a lag with the cameras, but with the TFs and the ROS connections, it's much faster. Uh, that's how you use TF in RVIS2. So that's all for today. Thanks. Give a like if you like the video. And in the next video, we are going to talk about the robot description and the models, which have very special things in ROS2. Very tricky. So until then, see ya. Peace.